Boom, already one step ahead of last month's episode. Forgot to record a reserve episode, y'all, for those of you that were on. Um, pie on my face. <laughs> um, Sarah, how are you? How are you? I'm good. It's cold here today, but I'm good. How are yeah. you? I'm doing all right. It is not cold in Charlotte. Uh, I'm doing good. I am excited to go on for the holidays. I'm going to Chicago. Uh, it feels very surreal. Uh, to, that it's Thanksgiving and uh, you know it's it's weird that it's going to be 2022 it's like the whole thing's just a little blur what is exactly what is time so um but on that note um actually we should introduce people Sarah who the heck are you and, and what the heck do you do uh, at Corner Brothers um I am the current editor of our blog which is called the 1895 journal you can find it on the website um Alex, what do you do? What do I do? I uh, I forget to record inside the crown episode. That's what I do. Now, uh, I am the head of our virtual styling department. So I do virtual appointments. Uh, I do chats. If you ever start up that chat on Gordon.com, that is usually me answering it. Um, also, shout out to Greg. Greg in Boston, one of our very, very best Gordon people is also on there this holiday season. Uh, and also, I create content not only on YouTube, but on the 1895 Journal. So. Um, you can see my face out there uh, a whole bunch of different places. Uh, today, uh, I'm excited because we are on the topic of holidays. We are not going to lef be left out in the cold and be a brand that doesn't give you gift guide content. And that's what we're talking about. Although I'm going to say this, a lot of gift guides, I feel like are like trying to show you the shiny new object, right? I am really excited about today's genuinely because you know that like, uh, when you work at a place and you have that employee discount, you end up, of course, getting your loved ones or your fr friends or family or whatever. You get them stuff from your brand, right? So, you know, have you been with the company for how many years now? Uh, two and a half. Okay, so you have a couple of Christmases under your belt. I mean, I've been with the company for 11 years. And this is my 11th Christmas of being like, hey. Um, and so I think it's really cool for us to be able to share genuinely like the um the gifts that we buy for people um uh, you know obviously there's some classics and tried and trues but also there's some stuff that tends to be overlooked or undervalued um and so i'm really excited to, to share that with you so um but before we get going we have a very uh, a very special guest i'm so excited i love having guests i don't know why it makes it feel more official and podcasty and i'm all into that um but from our um office uh, straight from Gorin HQ in San Francisco, the one and only Michael Fowler. Michael Fowler, how are you, sir? <laughs> Quite the introduction. I'm doing well. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Inside the Crown. Uh, uh, full disclosure, uh, I see, we, see, we see Michael, Sarah and I see Michael's face often on meetings. Yesterday, Michael Fowler was wearing the Growler, and I love that hat. I had kind of forgotten about it, and I was like, I'm going to bust it out. And then I had all this nervous uh, nervousness that you were going to wear it and i'm glad that you switched it up to something fresh and now i'm wearing the growler so thank you for the hat I, I thought about it so i, I did but <laughs> you told me that yesterday so i put on my uh one of my kind of el sol s hats so i love it i love it so uh michael tell tell the uh, folks out there um you know a little bit about yourself what we're uh, obviously you're in san francisco now but you know what do you do for corn currently and just kind of describe you know uh, your career and how it started with corn yeah, so currently I'm our e-commerce um, and merchandising manager, so um, big words, I guess, but really, you know, the day-to-day -day is, uh, you know, creating product go-to-market strategies um, with that, you know, putting uh, our product launches on a calendar, um, getting all that situated, um, assisting with content and creative direction, um, really cross channels, whether that's, you know, on our website, we're collaborating with our digital teams on um, any creative we're putting out in the ether. Um, and then, you know, a big part of my role is just like being a liaison between say our digital teams and our operations and product teams. So I do spend a lot of my time um, working with the product team on um, that product strategy. So um, hats that are really selling well, people are excited about. Um, we want to make more of those um, and then even just pushing into the future um, on both Gorit and the farm and um, developing product extensions, developing new blocks, developing new designs. So um, give a lot of input on that 
Uh, unfortunately, I don't design any product. But <laughs> Not yet. Not I, yet. But sometimes I design with words. So. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, if, if for those of you guys uh, watching right now live, uh, you know, please drop any questions you have for Michael in the chat. Uh, Michael is my go-to for if I'm wondering if something's going to go back in stock. So if there's a hat you love and your size is out of stock, literally, you don't have to ask me. Ask this guy. Uh, or if there's something you love um, that you want to see come back, drop you know, drop drop that in the chat. We'd love to hear it from you guys. We do this for y'all. So. Um, what did, uh, how did you start with yep. Lauren? I know that you uh, are in SF and you're doing this role, but that's not how you started, right? No, so yeah, a good question. I um, I started with Gorin, it'll be three years in January. So um, I started in our Seattle uh, location there about three years ago. Uh, I ran that shop as the store manager. Mm -hmm. um, really excited to be able to work with people every single day and kind of grow that. Um, that shop to a whole new level. And, you know, unfortunately last year, um, we had to shut down many of our stores and, you know, Seattle was one of them, but I had the opportunity to come on the digital team um, and, you know, pursue opportunities to still connect with, you know, a broader customer audience, which was really exciting to me. Um, it's, you know, really spread, spread my voice and spread my love for this brand um, to a bigger audience. And so took advantage of that opportunity um, last year and uh, moved out here to San Francisco where I work out of our home office now. So uh, really excited um, to still be able to connect with people in this way. I wish I could see see more faces more often, but um, yeah, I, I'm excited for opportunities like this to be able to speak to everyone. Yeah, I love, um, you know, one thing about all three of us is we all came from shops, right? Um, and I think that, you know, having that connection to customers and the fact that Gorin does do such a, a good job of promoting us, you know, from from that shop experience that tied to our customers into these roles, right? So you're not necessarily completely customer facing like you used to be, Michael, but you have that insight. You work with clients. Um, I'm sure you still have clients that hit you up on the IG or whatever. You know what I mean? And I think that's so important because it just makes everything you do. Um, it comes right back to what is important. It's obviously the customers that connection of hat to customers. So. Um, on that note, uh, so you've had, this will be your third Christmas with Norm? Fourth Christmas? Fourth holiday? Is this now for you? It'll be, it's, I think technically, yeah, it's my third holiday with Norm, so. Sweet. So you've uh, not only helped people buy gifts, but I'm assuming like both Sarah and I use that employee <laughs> discount to hook people up uh, and, and buy some gifts for some family, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, we that's really the time to buy, you know, it, all year you dream about different hats and all year you, you kind of daydream about which ones you're going to um, think about buying. And, you know, this is the time where usually we pull the trigger. Um, you know, we know they're not cheap and a lot of us still save up for particular hats. And this is the right time to really save up that kind of a hat, hat piggy bank money. So. Yeah, we may or may not have a promotion or two coming down next week for a small little uh, Thanksgiving holiday. Uh, we're the only retailer that ever goes on sale for Black Friday. Uh, so we have broken this down to this kind of three topics. We each have a pick. Um, we're going around Robin um, for a topic. The first one is gift ideas for that hat rookie. So, um, you know, Sarah, who, who, what's that customer like? When, when we talk about that rookie, can you just like kind of describe that for the people? Yeah, um, you know, I see it as someone who is very interested in hats, but maybe hasn't pulled the trigger yet, or someone who always tries on, but hasn't really found their niche yet of style. Um, you know, maybe it's like your dad or something who like has talked about hats his whole life, but doesn't actually own one. This would be like the curious individual who's down to get a hat, just hasn't got to that point yet. And you can be that person that gifts this wonderful thing that they want. Um, you know, gifting for me is the authenticity of it and the genuineness of it. Like I hate just checking someone off a list. I think it's total crap. And I would love to just be able to give someone something they actually want and love. Um, and I think hats can totally be that. Um, so that's how I just would describe like this intro hat curious. Um, I, and I, I think that's a perfect description of someone who maybe hasn't taken the plunge. Um, and we know for people who like know that about the fair left one that it can be really intimidating to come and be like, well, I know that, you know, my dad really wants a hat, but like, well, which one should I go with? And this is like what we did on the sales source for, 
you know, plenty of days. And so to be able to do this digitally and just like give you guys some ideas out there um, is kind of the impetus behind this, as well as just also what we think is dope. Um, and so I think we should let, let our guests go first, Sarah. Um, I'm gonna share my, I'm gonna share this little PowerPoint and uh, for the hat rookie, for the hat novice, Michael Fowler, what is your first pick? Yeah, I mean, my first pick is um, Nadine the Butcher. And, you know, the funny thing is it's it's already been mentioned in the chat. It looks like Victor wants a spicy mustard <laughs> butcher. And, you know, that's certainly something that um, will probably come out at some point. I mean, we've had probably 20 different variants of this particular hat. And really the, the reason for that is, you know, it's a versatility. Um, and the reason I picked it for for the rookie, even though you still see um, hat experts or hat enthusiasts wearing the Dean the Butcher is is because of that versatility. It truly looks good on everyone. It's really well balanced. It's got um, the crown, which is that top part is not too tall. Right. Um, the brim is not too short or not too wide. Um, it, it's really symmetrical in that, in that way. And when someone first came into the shop and you know they're unsure about a hat, um, this is one of the first ones I, I went to to put on someone's head and it's for the reasons stated above but um, it's really when someone puts on the Dean that's never wore something maybe they've only been used to baseball caps um, it feels natural right if you if you first put on a, a super white Colonel Pierce um, it feels big right like you're not used to something being out here uh, and the Dean the Butcher really feels like a baseball cap brim right? It's not going to stick out any further than your baseball cap brim. And so uh, you know, it feels really natural in people's head. And um, as I mentioned earlier, it, it really is a classic timeless shape. This is the fedora that's been around since the 20s, 30s. Um, and it's still around today and it will always be in style. So, um, it, I mean, whether you're new look you know or if you're trying to find a hat for somebody but being yeah. the book it really is like the easiest gift because um, other hats we know can be risky to buy because they're you know, really personalized um, especially for someone who maybe already has hats but you can't go wrong with the dean uh, particularly in whiskey because it matches everything but you know, we say. have the swirl dean on our website for someone who um, already wears hats and you want something a little bit more exciting um, but the, the whiskey's great for the first time customers who never wore a hat before. Then we got that swirl charcoal for someone that, um, you know, maybe already wears hats, but you still want to get them a really good gift. Yeah, you know, a couple points, uh, and then Sarah, I want to get your, your your quick takes on it as well. But I think, you know, that whiskey color, I advise my clients, like since it's an off brown, it's not a true chocolate brown or a dark brown, right? It's really versatile. You can wear this, you know, I wear a lot of navies, but I kind of transitioned into black in the last couple of years. And it's like amber color still really plays with the black. Um, and then the other thing you're pointing to it, like this is the hat I described to my clients that has that soft finish. It feels like putting your foot in a sneaker. Um, it's super comfy. It's just like you put it in, you put your head on it, out of the box, and you're good to go. Like nothing else necessary. Sarah, anything to add on the Dean? I mean, everything you all had just said, like this was my husband's first hat from Warren um, and he, totally wears only black jeans and does this hat with it. Um, and it Killer. was this idea where like, it was easy intro, but still felt cool. Um, and I would say like, so often in shops we're like, I need a black hat, I'll go with everything. And like, for sure, there's a black hat sure. moment needed, but whiskey is almost always my first suggestion because it does go with your entire wardrobe. Love it. This is yeah, actually I mean, my personal Dean that I've taken the band off. I had this probably since 2014-ish, so I've had it forever. Um, it's still on my hat wall. Yeah, look, and you know, if the Dean the Butcher is just such an easy choice to put on first or to get someone because even if they don't like it, it gives you a, a stable place to go, go oh, from. Totally. So you put the Dean on your head and you're like, maybe I do want more hats. So you. You, then you you know you can step up to the River Gray or go to the Colonel Pierce, maybe because you maybe you did want to you know look more like say a rock star or you wanted to make that right. step, you know? or if you know the Dean is you know even too much hat for you, you know you need to level down a little bit and maybe a like a, a pork pie like a Slick Jones 
is a better option for you, but it really gives you that that center to be um, to know if um, a hat is right for you and how much you want to take it up or if you need to take it down. So yeah, if anything, it's the best hat to at least try. Um, it's the best hat to start on to at least wear something for you know a couple of days. Look at yourself in the mirror and decide where you want to go with it. But love it, love it. Um, Sarah, you're up. What is your pick? So um, I chose Nighthawk for my pick. Um, do we still have all three of these colors available? I think the tan is now sold out, unfortunately. So I'm, I'm giving a teaser of, uh, of that color. But right now, I think we do have the black and the steel gray is in. Yeah. So the reason I, I like the Nighthawk pick, um, is because it's so tonal. There's no contrasting band, there's no contrasting ribbon edge. Like it is just monochromatic in like the best way possible. So it goes with everything. It's a chameleon. Whatever you pair it with in terms of outfitting, it'll it'll totally highlight it in all the right spots and won't take away from your outfit at all. So I think it's it's super cool if someone sometimes people, especially in the shops, would come in and be like, Oh, a Dean is a little bit too traditional for me. Like it's with the gross green band, it's very like 1920s, 1930s. And sometimes they want something a little bit more modern. I feel like Nighthawk just has that little bit of bump that makes it step up into that time frame, but oh, still right. has a very ease to wearing it. So Nighthawk, I actually don't own, but I love it. And I think it's one of the best ones we make that are just so simple that people sometimes overlook it, but I think it's a really nice statement too. I'm gonna have a section on, I'm gonna have Fowler uh, curate a section on the website that's uh, Sarah's favorite hats that she doesn't own, because you have a lot. I have a lot of favorite hats that I do not own. It's really true. Uh, Fowler, any any thoughts on the uh, on the Nighthawk? Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's arguably my favorite hat. It really is. It's. I did it's, not know that. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's everything Sarah said. I mean, it's just, the little things like it not having a hat band, but a self band just creates that simplicity. It's like a, it's like a black sneaker, right? I mean, it just goes with everything, but it's not, there's no like white shoelaces to, to make the shoe pop or, um, you know, it doesn't have, you know, designs within the sneaker. I mean, that is what the Nighthawk is. It's, it's simple in the most simple form. Um, the, the crown is lower than our traditional yep. shapes, even lower than, say, the Dean the Butcher or um, River Gray, Colonel Pierce. So, uh, and that's what you hear a lot is people say, oh, no, it's too tall for me. It's too tall for me. I mean, that's like one of the number one things people say. Nighthawk erases that. And then the brim just, again, same thing I said about the Dean the Butcher, but it's it's almost an afterthought because if you're already used to wearing those baseball caps, it's no wider than that. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, I don't have anything to add other than, uh, you know, I, this was a hat that I kind of grew into, and then I really realized it's made of merino wool. Dean the Butcher's 100% wool. And really, moving down to the south, being in Charlotte now from New York City, that humidity is real, right? And it's it's just warm. It was 74 degrees here today, and it's just like, I needed something more breathable, and the benefits of an online merino wool hat just became really obvious. Um, and so for me, for your, you know, if you have a, a person out there that lives in the south, the merino wool, if you're going to do felt, is going to give you that nice temperature, breathability, and range that sometimes wools are a little tougher when the humidity kicks up. So um, I wear this sucker all the time. It's a true more course. It's kind of replaced the Dean Butcher in my wardrobe and that. So uh, moving on to my last pick. I'm curious what you guys think about this, but I'm going with the new one, the Beware. Uh, this is a little bit, I guess, of a bold choice because unlike everything you just said, Michael, about, uh, you know, the, the low crown of um the nighthawk and that being things that people that are new to hats um usually are a little self-conscious about taller crowns beware definitely has a full-size crown and on top of it it's a fairly wide brim but i feel like there's some people out there who want a proper hat and i feel like since we've introduced the flat wide brims they're more willing to start off and dip their toes into that pool and go a little bit bolder a little bit wider to me the proportions on this hat seem perfect um full disclosure i've not had this in my hands i think michael you have um, I'm very jealous of you, uh, but I think a solid colored hat like this, again, this is a tan, even though it has a brown band, so maybe it leans a little bit more to the browns and, and, and 
um, you know, earth tones. I feel like a solid color tan like this, you can wear with a ton. This to me seems like a hat that I could wear right now in 2021, 2022, and I'll still be wearing it in 2032. Like it's just kind of a classic proportion um, hat. So um, either one of you, I don't know if you have any takes on this. This is a brand new one for Lauren, but I, to me, this is, a, this is a great starter hat as well because of its simplicity. Yeah, I think the only distinction I would probably make is I agree. I mean, this is the color, the shape, um, the simplicity of it is a really great first hat for somebody. I'd say the only distinction, you know, again, I would make is um, I typically probably wouldn't put someone in this that um, is just overall unsure about maybe they're just now learning like their um, other pieces of their outfit or they're just like completely unsure about if they're they need a hat or not if if it's someone who's just bold and everything else in their life and they just don't own a hat yet right? and they just don't own a hat yet this is the one right it's it's not subtle but it's also not you know making this massive statement it can be someone's everyday hat right i love it um well i think we're on to our next category which is uh, and this is probably relevant to all of you joining us on the call. This is, what is your gift picks for the hat experts? So if someone who has, has all these that we just showed, has their basic solid color hat, maybe wants something a little different, hey. off the beaten path, um, a little bit more special, unique, okay. uh, so to speak. Okay. Uh, Fowler, what is Appreciate. your pick? Oh, someone's, I'm gonna mute somebody. <laughs> um, uh, but Fowler, what is your pick? for a hat. Yeah, I mean, my pick is um, another new one, but we have so many new hats right now, so can't really help it, but um, it's the All Shoot. Uh, many of you might know that um, name, but now we brought it in platinum. So my go-to pick for, um, you know, more of a hat expert, if you will, is the All Shoot in platinum. And the fun fact about it, it's built upon the same um, block as the Nighthawk that we just previously went over um, for a hat rookie. And this is, you know, to me, a graduation from the Nighthawk. Uh, and so it's still got that low profile that the Nighthawk um, has, but a slightly wider brim. And then, of course, you can't help but notice just the subtle details of the all shoes. So good. Um, namely, the, that leather-wrapped band with the horse hair on it. Uh, it's just a really good touch of styling. And then, of course, my favorite thing, and I don't think, besides the Nighthawk Rowler, I don't think I own a hat that doesn't have an edge binding on it. It's one of my favorite things, and I think it's a really um, easy way to add that extra styling to anyone's wardrobe. And um, I think it completes a hat for yeah. me. Um, and then the other thing uh, an edge binding does for a hat is it almost takes on the hat's color, right? Like I would almost say that this is a black hat just because it has the black binding on it. It's a great call. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see the styling in this easily with blacks as opposed to whites, right? Like it seems much easier to go that way for sure. Yeah, exactly. So it just, it makes it really versatile, but you know, you look like a hat person with this one. You are a hat person. Yeah, right, hat. yeah. You don't see, um, I mean, if this is your first hat, that's amazing, right? But because you've got you've got the right um, styling to just take it up a notch even further than that. But um, this is just the kind of hat that looks like you're trying, but you're really not at all. So, yeah, Sarah, anything to add on the Oshoot shape with this new guy? Anything? Oshoot is awesome. I. I agree with Michael, like the horsehair really does it for me, the double band. Um, I think it just has that little bit extra of detail that makes it really unique. Um, in growing my hat collection over the years, it's like I, I wanna have those core, very basic, simplistic hats that are grab and go. And then I wanna have really awesome hats that I know I'll feel like 100% my best in just by putting on my head. Um, and Oshoot is definitely one of those. Like you can't walk by someone and they won't compliment you. Like they're gonna compliment you no matter what because it looks amazing. And so like for someone, if you're gifting and they're a high card fan of just hats hey. or Gorn hats specifically, like if you give them this, they're gonna be like, oh my uh, gosh, get me. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, additionally, it's, um, you know, you see a lot of hats and, you know, Gorin is the same way. I mean, you see a lot of hats where they really feel like really showy and they feel like art pieces. Um, and, you know, they can be difficult to find something to wear with or the, they become like an outfit hat or they become a hat that you only pull out for, you know, certain times or events. But what the All Shoot does and really special is, is take those same elements um, with really great design, um, but doesn't make it showy and doesn't make it that art piece. Um, so you could literally wear this with everything and um, it really stands out, but it's not it's not that showy art piece that burns right. and has like patterns all over it. I mean, it, it's really simple, but super stylish. It's not over the top. Oh, Sarah, what is your pick for uh, a gift for a hat expert? Um, another new one. It is Fathom River, which is a river oh. gray shape, um, but just some cool color combinations. Our river gray always has a cool co color combination. Like the gray is our classic. It has that tan band, it has the black edge or vice versa. Um, but this one I love, like black hats for me are, are a little tough. I do have Giddy Up, which I love. That's just black on black, but mm -hmm. I like this because of the earth tones that are with it and you can tie it with everything. And so for me, this is someone who has hats, maybe they have Dean, maybe they even have River Gray, but this is just like very elegant and just kind of steps it up a little bit. Um, and it's very similar to what Michael said about all shoe, like this is just a little bit above um, while still maintaining that very like wearability. Yeah. Uh, it's not too much. It's very, very elegant. And that's why I like it. You know, the color combination is not something you see often. There's definitely people that like, you can't mix your blacks and browns. And the fact mm -hmm. that this is just going for it and works is amazing. The edge binding, to Michael's earlier point, really completes this hat without the edge binding. I don't know if this hat really makes sense, but it just kind of really? encapsulates it. The other thing that's huge for me on this one is the fact that uh, it's named after Ryan, um, our store manager in Atlanta, who's one of um, by far the best sport performing people out there. Shout out to Ryan in Atlanta. So this is named after him, um, of one of two hats, the Beware. So we're, we're just giving Ryan all kinds of love here. Um, love it. Um, my pick is gonna be off the beaten path. Uh, I had to show some cut and sew love, of course. And so my pick is Plum Gravy. This sucker is not out yet. It is coming. It is, Fowler, how do you describe Plum Gravy? It's just like a funky baseball to me, right? Like how would you get, how, if you were gonna talk to someone over the phone and describe this, how would you describe this hat? I mean, it's it's like a stylish cadet. Yeah. You know? Like a, where a cadet and baseball caps meet. Um, and right? I have one also, so I am totally gonna floss right now. I've never seen it. It looks amazing. It's so good, you guys. I mean, obviously I have the pictures here, um, but you know, the, the detailing on it, if you can see that, the, like, the kind of fur finish, the brush wool is amazing, but it's the color combination, which from this picture you can see, follow you exactly right. It's basically like a stylish cadet, but I mean, this is a hat that when we opened up the box, the wife immediately wanted to steal. Um, and you know, she doesn't wear hats like the way that we do, but she just immediately gravitated towards it because the colors, are beautiful. Um, shout out to Peep, one of our designer, cut and sew designer. Um, for those of you that saw that IG live we did with him, this is one of those we were waiting on. Um, it's the hard one to describe. Um, my other favorite thing about it is the linings are absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm getting the detailing on these are so good. The under brim, everything on this. So plum gravy, uh, Fowler. When is this coming? Do you know? It should be out. I think fairly soon. Correct? Yeah, I think we're. Uh... We're looking at the middle of December, so you know, awesome. right after the holidays, um, where the big holiday rush comes, but very, very soon. Yeah, this is my funky little choice for someone who has everything because I can guarantee they don't have plum gravy. I mean, who does? Uh, straight from the mind of Pete to your hat wall. So we are on to our last picks here. It is our stocking stuffers, so um, some smaller items. Um, Fowler, what is your pick for a stocking stuffer? Yeah, no, I mean, mine's, you know, not the sexiest product we have, but it's oh, probably good. one of the most uh, functional products you can give to someone who um, has a hat uh, and wants to take care of it. And, you know, that's our hat hair kit. Um, it's probably the easiest um, choice, um, again, to give somebody who already wearing hats. 
Um, we, you know, I, I said this earlier, but we know how difficult it can be to buy a hat for someone, particularly if they already wear hats. But this is something that they will appreciate. It, um, it's got everything you need um, to keep the hat fresh. It's got, you know, the horsehair hat brush. It's got the, the treated sponge and it's got the, the spot remover for your hats as well. So it's um, a great call yeah. because it's something that maybe people don't necessarily always buy for themselves. They're like, ah, I'll get it. I'll get it sometime. I'll get it sometime. It's a perfect gift for someone who has all the shapes and is spending their money on all the hats. Like take care of your hats. It's, it's such a good call. Um, yeah. So I love it. Um, Sarah, what is your stocking stuff for pick? Mine is the Ruthie. Um, and I have one accidentally, I have it, but <laughs> I, I love a Gatsby style, which is that eight panel style, uh, usually with a button on top there. Um, this is a suede and it's that, again, that kind of whiskey brown color. So it kind of goes with so much. I just feel like for holiday season, I'm all about like the velvets, the suede, the furs, like all the textures that come into play. Um, they're really thick wools and things like that. So I think this is such a good gift. The other reason why I like it so much is for me with cut and sew and with the flat caps in general, I feel like you can really have a size ambiguous, like it's gonna be ambiguous. Like this one, I'm a medium and this is an extra large. And like, I would still rock this, you know? It just depends on how your preference is, but it's easy in terms of gifting because you can't really go wrong. Right. And that's why I like it so much. Like it's a, it's a kind of intro to this kind of style too. Like there's nothing else too crazy going on in terms of the Gatsby. It's just like the shape itself. Um, so I think it's one of the sneaky good ones that people sometimes overlook. In, in the, it's got my favorite, it, probably my favorite Gorn fabric, which is that waterproof suede. Um, literally, you guys, water runs right off of that hat. It's amazing. You can wear that in a blizzard. Or you can wear that in a rainstorm, and it will take care of you, and you'll still be looking good. I also think it's a sneaky one that you can get a bunch of looks on, right? You can wear it a little bit more flat, like a, a Gatsby. You can wear it more yeah. cabbage style, slicked back. So it's just crazy versatile on the looks, um, and I love that about that hat. Um, we're on the last one, and guess what? I'm gonna stick with cut and sew. My pick is four bars. Uh, four bars dropped on the website, uh, I think like a week or two ago, right, Michael? Like, it was relatively recently, right? Yeah, no, it's a hidden gem, for sure. It, it's, uh, I'm always a cut and sew dude. I can't get enough of cut and sew, but also if you tell me that something is waxed, uh, a wax cotton, I have a wax cotton jacket. I got like three wax hats. I just love the function of hats, of course, right? The fashion's great. Um, this is a, a wax low profile, um, almost like a five panel, but kind of a funky one. It's another one from the Cut and Sew collection. We do it in two different colors. This crazy color is way too close to Green Bay Packer colors. And as a Chicago Bears fan, I will never ever buy this color combination, but you should if that's your team and you like it and you like the color combinations. However, the other color is this amazing cream and navy combo and it is hot fire. And literally this is the hat I'm buying for myself. So this is my gift to myself. I think this is absolutely a hidden gem on Gordon.com right now. I think we made like 70 pieces of each. So there's not a lot of them. And again, if you want something that's a little bit off the beaten path, this is absolutely it. So I love uh, this one so much. Like the color combo, you said it, it's so good. So like good. I am such a neutral girl and a little bit of like kind of navy going on in there. I just think it makes it so much cooler. It's it's so, so good. Um, we are running out of time. However, I wanted to see if there was any questions or anything. Sarah, did you see anything in the comments? I know we had tons of people shouting at Michael um, for for some ideas about uh, the Wolf Johnson and the River Great Camel. Are they coming back? Um, let's see here. What else we got? Uh, oh, loving all the comments, y'all. Great to see y'all up in here. There was straight up conversation. Um, what is holding your guys' hats on the hat wall? We use these little pegs um, that, uh, did we find a person on Etsy or something? The little wooden pegs that we yeah, They're actually just on Amazon. I think if you just search hat wall pegs, um, it's the same ones we use in our stores and um, I believe you have them too, Alex. So, so yeah, quick Amazon purchase. I think you get like uh, five packs at a time and you can go up from there. Javi asked when the aw shoot is coming up. It actually, I think, dropped today on the website, that platinum, correct? 
Yep. Yeah, you dropped it. I see. There's a lot in the new arrivals today, you guys. We can yeah. Have our hour-long conversation just about the new arrivals because there's a lot of them. I'm gonna have to re-alter my gift guide. I had a question. Uh, how do you keep the hats clean when on the wall? Any tips? That hat, hat care kit that we were talking about. Use your hat brush. If you're not wearing them regularly, use that hat brush to make sure that you're dusting them off for sure. That is your friend, 100%. Absolutely. If it's a hat that you know, like it's a cream and you're really worried about it, you can put it in some plastic or something and keep it on the peg. That'll probably be best. But the hat brush and that hat care kit is the best. So. Um, well, that's it. We've run a little bit over time, which is great. Awesome conversation. Um, Michael, tell the folks, what, what do you got coming? Is there anything exciting you can share or anything that's uh, exciting that you want to share that uh, is coming down the pike here? I mean, there, there really is a lot. Um, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> do you want to pick one thing? <laughs> yeah, we got, I mean, obviously everyone knows there's something cooking up for the holidays and, you know, we are going to make it special. We've got... Um, an all farm sale on Black Friday, and we've got an all Gorin sale on Monday. So there's two opportunities for you to get deals that you've never seen before, um, especially on the farm. I don't know if we have any farm fans out there, but uh, we've never put those on sale, and it's really going to be an incredible scene. Um, along with that, we're going to drop a brand new capsule on the farm oh, that same day. So hot it's, fire, it's pretty, you guys! Hot fire. Yeah. It, it's really exciting and it, it takes farm to a whole nother level. Yeah. Um, so really excited for you guys to see that. And then just going into December, you know, we've got, um, you know, more on the farm. We've got hoodies coming out. We've got brand new t-shirts coming out. And then we've got a couple collaborations with Hampui um, throughout December and January. So uh, there really is a lot going on. Um, I know, you know, a lot of times it's too many. You can't buy them all, but there's definitely going to be something out there for everyone. Yeah, it does not make it any easier with our discount. We still want all the hats and uh, can't quite afford them. Uh, Sarah, what can we uh, expect from you on 1895? Come um, so I just this week I posted about the we had I had four gift guides that were specifically geared towards certain kind of gift recipients. So the first one was that kind of rookie one. Um, Hat Curious, that one's already on there. If you guys want to check that one out, I have three more coming. And then Alex has a special virtual stylist one coming as well. So a lot of gifting ideas just kind of spark it. I know it gets super overwhelming this time of year. You're constantly getting emails and things like that. So if you want to take a little bit of solace from that and just go on the website and check out the blog, there's a bunch of stuff I just haven't laid out for you. So that's coming over the next couple of weeks. Awesome. You took the words right out of my mouth. I, there's gift guides um, that I'm creating and then I got a YouTube uh, showing people how to actually like, we talk about gift ideas, but also like how to pick sizes and what do I do with returns? I kind of go through that not sexy stuff of buying gifts so that if you're not, if you're worried about that, you watch that video, hopefully we make it easy for you. Um, but uh, we, I think we're going to take a hiatus and we're not going to have it inside the crown until January. However, um, Sarah and I are really excited to, to, for our planning and we have some amazing, amazing ideas coming up, particularly for our January one. We have a lot of amazing products. So um, stay tuned for an announcement on what's next from, from, from us. Uh, before we go, I just want to thank Michael Fowler. Michael, thank you for showing up for being our second ever guest on Inside the Crown. This is super fun. Yeah, no, thanks for having me and I appreciate everyone staying on and uh, enjoying the conversation, chatting in the... Uh, the chat box there so good to hear from everyone for sure happy thanksgiving to everyone out there and uh we'll see you on uh, on the internet as per usual y'all take care <laughs> bye sarah bye michael bye, bye.